Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event, yes, it's a webinar, um, <laughs> that we do, um, covers anything that might be of interest to librarians across the state and actually across the country. We do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are all recorded, so if you're unable to join us um, on Wednesday mornings, you can go onto our website and see all the recordings um, and watch all the recordings of all the previous sessions we have done. We do um, mixtures things here. We do presentations, interviews, um, mini training sessions, anything that's related vaguely to libraries, we'll put it on the show. Um, we have commission staff that do sessions for us, episodes, and we have um, guest speakers that come in, which I guess today we sort of have a mixture. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last Wednesday of the month, usually, almost every time, is our um, Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, sitting next to me here, um, who is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And he comes on and shares some tech news of the month since the last time he did, and sometimes brings in speakers, as he has today over here to his left. Um, and I will just hand over to you, and you can explain what you've got here and who you've brought in. Great. Thanks, Krista. Um, setting up Tech Talk each month is always kind of an, an experience. Um, usually, sometimes I'm finding people at the last minute. Sometimes I've got folks booked uh, months in advance, and I just want to share a quick little story about how today came about. I was at Internet Librarian uh, last month. Yeah, last month, October, October. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I had just finished having lunch one day with um, Amy Mather from Omaha Public Library, and I had forgotten my camera at the restaurant, so I had to run back to the restaurant and get my camera. And Then I realized I had left the power cord to my laptop in the room I had done a presentation in before, so I, I ran over to that room before that session started and ended up running into uh, Rivka Sass, uh, formerly of the uh, Omaha Public Library. And then by this time, sessions had started, and I wasn't sure where I was going to go, and I just started flipping through the, the, the catalog, and I went, Hmm, artificial intelligence in the library, that sounds interesting. So I, I went over there and I, I, I kind of sit down towards the front and plug my computer in and I went, wait a minute, this looks familiar. <laughs> and it was Deanne and Laura from UNL uh, here uh, talking about their Pixel project. And I thought, okay, I'm in California and I'm just running into everybody from Nebraska who was at this conference in less than an hour. So um, I, I sat through the presentation and then walked up to them and said, hey, how'd you like to be on the show? And, and I, I, I think you kind of looked at me like we've been waiting for you to call. So, <laughs> so uh, we have here today Deanne Ellison and uh, Lorna Dawes from UNL. And I'm just going to kind of hand it over to them to give uh, their presentation about this very interesting project of theirs and then we'll we'll uh, you know submit questions as we're going along and we'll we'll get those in and I'm sure I will have some questions for them from the end at the end so uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away okay thank you uh, we're going to be going back and forth during our presentation so you get a chance to hear hear both of our perspectives I'm Deanne Allison and I'm the director for computing operations and so I'm the um, the technical person behind pixel pixels mother if you would <laughs> And uh, Lorna is here to provide more of a reference public service perspective. She joined the project about a, about a year into it, and I was really happy to get a little different viewpoint than what I have. So I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of information. Oops. Yep. All right. There we go. Just click, click on it. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm going to start with a little bit of an overview of what the U University of Nebraska-Lincoln is like. We, um, we're a land-grant institution founded in 1869, so a fairly old institution as far as that goes. We are recognized by the Carnegie, Carnegie Foundation as a major um, research activity institution. So research is an important part of what we do. It's, uh, we have three major missions, research, service, and education, of course. There are about 18,000 students at UNL and about 2,500 faculty staff. So we're not a, a really large institution, but it's a, large enough so that we have interesting times trying to serve everyone in the libraries. For the libraries, we have uh, seven libraries on campus right now. The largest is Love Library with six branch libraries. We work very closely with uh, 
the law college and their library there and we share a catalog and, and many of the same resources. We also have uh, the archives for the whole university system. That's the uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln, Omaha Kearney, and the Med Center all located in, in Love. We have special collections as well, and that um, concentrates on rare and, and, and uh, limited editions of uh, books from the Great Plains in Nebraska in particular. We have a heavy collection of Willa Cather materials, for example. As a research um, institution, research is also important to the libraries. It's part of our mission as well. And so Pixel fit pretty nicely into that, that particular function. Uh, we are hoping that we would be able to reduce staffing and potentially 24-hour chat service by substituting um, people for, for Pixel. We do not expect to replace reference um, librarians by any matter of means. Uh, reference is important, an important service for the libraries, but there's an awful lot of questions that come to the reference desk that could be answered by, by Pixel. Directional questions, really simple things. We don't expect Pixel to ever be mentoring somebody through a thesis or dissertation. We expect, oh, big. <laughs> we expect the librarians <laughs> to be providing high touch in those areas where that's important. But for the undergraduate at 2 o'clock in the morning who realizes their paper's due in three hours, Pixel could be a lifesaver. Why a chatbot? Uh, start with, it is a conversational agent. So it's unlike uh, lists. Uh, facts, FAQs, and other kinds of help help um, pages that we've been created for years. It gives one answer to, to a question that comes through and not a list. Uh, it is text-based. The one that we developed is text-based, mm -hmm. which is hence the term chat. But it could include sound and visual effects. There are other chat bots around that do that. It's a technology that undergraduates are very familiar with. It's kind of like the gaming software that they, they use so, so much. The software that runs Pixel is based on a database um, that includes information, single, a single bit of information that is uh, organized or managed through metadata. And that metadata matches against the person's query to bring back the result that the person is asking for. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so it's ready whenever the patron is there. All of the information on the website can be added into it. I tried to get all of the different pages included in term, into the metadata, into the database. So it can actually flatten the website so people don't need to know, need to know where to go to get information. It isn't intimidating to people, and from the chat logs I can tell you people are not intimidated at all by Pixel. <laughs> Uh, they're not afraid. <laughs> well, it's kind, it can be kind of amusing when I see arguments going back and forth. You said this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Kind of thing. Uh, it, it, Pixel does have personality, and it does that does happen from time to time. But people aren't afraid of asking a stupid question. And on the other angle, which sometimes uh, gets overlooked, is that you don't have to worry about the person on the other end. I know some parents will not let their children use chat because of the fear of a stranger danger, but a software program is not something that they would have to worry about. Uh, finally, the software can handle multiple questions at a time, which is kind of nice. There is never going to be a queue set up for people waiting for an answer, and it could literally handle hundreds of questions, and we got so lucky as to have that many. Now I'm going to turn it over to Lorna. Thank you, Dan. So what can Pixel do? Hi, I'm Lorna, and as Dan said, I came in about a year ago, and what I really wanted to do with Pixel was have a lot of conversations with Pixel to see how friendly Pixel was and to see how close to a reference service Pixel could get. So um, we found that Pixel can help the reference librarian and the patron. And for the reference librarian, it can help, especially new librarians, navigate the web page. As Dan said, some of our web pages are very dense. And what Pixel does is Pixel will search the website for us and find what we need on the website. It can also access all those easy questions that, as a reference librarian, we think we should know. But when we're new again, 
we don't know some of the common questions, some of the questions are in the frequently answered questions. And sometimes it can get very embarrassing when somebody comes and asks simple question, directional question, and you don't know. Well, Pixel is never new. Pixel knows everything, and Pixel will find those directions for you, which is really good. You know, I've been in Love Library. Sometimes right. the directions are it impossible. Is. <laughs> it is, and Pixel can help. And, yeah. It is very difficult. <laughs> and um, for the patron, of course, once again, the simple answers, it can give database instruction. It can help them articulate in requests. And also, Pixel doesn't show impatience like we do as humans. And sometimes that's very important. You know, Pixel will continue and continue. Pixel always remains polite. And that is something that we find very helpful. Even when the patron isn't. Even when the patron isn't. <laughs> so what I did is I went through our guidelines. And we have research guidelines for <clears throat> how, as reference librarians, we should conduct ourselves at the table. And so I looked at the guidelines that in academic libraries is our RUSA guidelines, and those are the guidelines that we follow. And they have five guidelines that we should try to follow when we are giving reference. And so when we're training staff in reference, these are the guidelines we follow. So I went through Pixel, and I wanted to see, and Diane went through. And so each time I went through a guideline, I went to examine how Pixel relates to this guideline, what she does, and what, when, what we can improve. The first thing, of course, is approachability. We know that when people go to the reference desk, we want them to be approachable. And so we were very careful to make Pixel approachable. And I will go in and show you how approachable Pixel can be with just warm greetings. We positioned her prominently on the website. Originally, she was in a beta testing zone. Now she has moved to a prominent place on the website. So if somebody's going into the website, they can immediately go to Pixel. And I want to go to Pixel now. And let's see how approachable, can I get rid of this? Let's see how approachable Pixel is. So I'm... I'm gonna talk they down. Oh no, there's no, no, no it's no, text. There's no oh, right. Okay. So um, so I'm just going to say hello. <laughs> Let me see if Pixel will ask, will tell me who she is. <laughs> Do you really <laughs> think hello is who you are? <laughs> okay. My name is Lorna. Now, she could have been rude. But she wasn't really. Hello, Lorna. How can I help you? I think she's very approachable. <laughs> All right? I think, I think she's very approachable. And so what I'm going to ask her is, since it's coming up for Christmas, I'm going to ask Pixel if she has any books on baking. What do you have? Doesn't take spelling really well. All right. And let's see what Pixel will say to us. I can look that up for you. Okay. She's a very kind person. All right? And she looks. But the thing about Pixel is Pixel is approachable, and we made sure that she was approachable. Next thing we wanted, which sometimes can be very um, difficult as librarians, we wanted Pixel to show an interest. So she, number one, we know that Pixel does answer in a timely manner. Again, as humans, sometimes we cannot get to our patrons in a timely manner. If we're the only ones at the reference desk, then sometimes it's very difficult to get to them when they need us. Pixel gets to them in a timely manner. And what Pixel does is she continues the communication, which, what, which is something we try to do on chat. And she also demonstrates a commitment to providing information. And if we look back at the thing that I did, she demonstrates a, commi a commitment here by telling you, number one, I can look it up for you. So I'm committed to finding it for you. And then she goes on to say, if you need illustrations, check the facet on the left of the catalog. So what she has done is she searched our catalog for us. She's also said to the patron, but if you don't want these books, if you want illustrations, you can look elsewhere. Okay. And so what I want to tell Pixel is I think 240. I think that's too many books. So I'm just going to say, I think that's too many. And see if she's still committed to um, talk to me or 
And she says, you really think that's many books? And I say, yes. I, she's still committed. You know, it's, it's, it's a funny it's thing. A good search, really. It's a good search. <laughs> this is what she's saying. But she's very polite with that. So she does have the way where she is very committed. All right. Again, another one of our uh, um, guidelines is that we have to show that we are listening. And that is what Pixel does effectively. What she does is she has to show that she hears what you say. She can repeat the question, but she has to show that she understands what you say. And of course, this may be one of the difficult things to get a computer program to do because they can't see the body language. And this is one of the things that is very important on face-to-face -face and, and is not on chat. The people want to see the verbal cues. This is something that we are trying to get into Pixel. But of course, you have to do it through text. But how does she show she's listening is the question. So I, I want to write a thesis for a research paper. Right. This is going to be interesting, right? How do you write a All right. Let's see if she heard me. OK. And the important thing is, even if she doesn't hear me, I want to know what it is. So does it have anything to do with science? And I'm going to say, of course it does. Like, why wouldn't it have anything to do with science? All right, so she heard me. <clears throat> but again, again, she is not sure. And this is where she shows that. She's here. She might not be clear. And this is one thing that we will build into Pixel. It's those open-ended questions. It's those neutral questions that get her to ask for something else. I've heard that you want resources on research in science, but if you're interested in more articles, I'm going to put you onto our e-resources page. And this is what Pixel does. Oh, wrong page there. Oh, I need to go back. Previous. There you go. So what we need to do here, the other thing that I've shown that Pixel does, which we don't do as librarians, which is very important, is the teaching aspect of reference. The teaching aspect of reference says that you actually try to make the patron an independent learner by so showing them your search strategy. Pixel obviously does that because what Pixel does is Pixel actually brings up the whole list of where you can go on the website. And that is very, that's very important. And later on, Leanne will come and show you the, the, the sequence in, the, in which P, Pixel searches. Pixel will go to a website, and she'll go to LibGuides, and she'll go. So what, so where, am I still on the sciences? Okay, so she'll go on the e-resources. So I'm going to say, this did not help. Let's see. I'm not sure what she's going to do now. What will you do with this information? Again, she's trying to say, what are you going to do with this? I'll get a paper, an assignment. Should I put a paper? Sure. Let's see what Pixel will do. <laughs> what will you do with this information? All right, now Pixel has stopped listening. <laughs> so I'll say bye. Thank you. Was I helpful? She still wants to know, which is interesting because the last thing we, we have showed Pixel to do is follow-up. Follow-up is important because what Pixel and what we have to do is, number one, know if we've helped the patron so that we can help the next patron and also encourage the patron to come back. And so Pixel loves to know if she was helpful. And I just want to see if I can get Pixel to be rude, but I can't. So I said, <laughs> so I said to Pixel, no, Pixel, unfortunately, you weren't helpful. But she's sorry, which shows that she's polite, and she wants to know what she can do to improve. So what we've tried to do with Pixel is Pixel also has to adhere to the same guidelines that we adhere to as reference. And for us, that's important because it, it, it ensures that she maintains a certain standard of service. And we do these guidelines so that we maintain a standard of service. And that's how we get Pixel to maintain the standard of service. So I'm going to hand back over to Deanne, and she's going to tell you what happens in the background, okay, what Pixel does behind the scenes.
Oh, you went through mine. That's it. I had skipped through these. Yeah. These were um, things that, that Lorna talked about. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go under the hood at this point to tell you a little bit more about the technology and how it's built. There are a couple of ways to build a chat bot. There are commercial sites that you can work with, subscribe to, and, and they will host and manage the chat bot for you. I'm not going to talk about those today because we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> There's also open source projects, which are more, much more attractive to libraries. And the two big ones that I'm most familiar with are Pandora Bots and ProgramO. Pandora Bots is a really nice um, site because it hosts the, the chat bot for people and it's for nonprofits, it's free. So if you're interested in playing around with creating your own chat bot, it's a great place to start. Program O is what we did at UNL. It's an open source code that was developed that we've done a little bit of modification on. And as I go through this, I'll explain a little bit about what we did. There are other chatbots around. Uh, there's Emma the cat bot, which was <laughs> developed. At, it's actually a cat if you go to the site, and it's a talking cat too, so you might find that interesting. It was developed uh, for Mentor Public Library. And then there's Stella and Lisa. There's two European um, chatbots, and Stella, if you know German, is a great one to go play with because that one has been around for a long time, so it's one of the more developed ones that's out on the internet. For the database, you started by pulling information from the library website, circulation, hours, kind of basic questions that people will ask. How do I get a book for interlibrary loan? For community users, can we check out materials? That kind of information. Those can get kind of complicated because we do have different, different uh, rules for different types of patrons. Community users have a different circulation policy than undergraduates and faculty do who pretty much don't have to follow any rules. Uh, we use the built-in chat log and um, add information when Pixel doesn't respond appropriately. So we try to keep continually adding to the knowledge base behind that Pixel uses to answer questions. We also use chat logs from the real people in the library, the librarians. We have 24-hour chat, question point service as well, so I uh, mine those logs periodically to get information that I can add into Pixel. Who is Pixel? Uh, Pixel is a, is a chatbot that was developed using Program O. We added some customization to the program, uh, some display coding for bolding and to produce lists so it displays a little bit better, and the frame that appears at the bottom of the screen that you saw a minute ago. So the front end, there's the box, text box, where the person types in their question, and then where the book is, is the um, iframe that gets rotated based on the question the person puts in. If the question has a link, uh, Pixel's program executes that link and displays it in the iframe on the bottom part. It displays the first one if there's more than one. And here's another example of that. Who is the president? So it goes out and, and pulls that information out and displays the image at the bottom with the link above it. So if someone clicks on the link, it opens it in a new tab. That's helpful when they're going into the catalog because they probably want a bigger window to do searches with. A meal is the metadata that's behind Pixel, and it means artificial intelligence markup language. And the AliceBot site is the original site for all of the information on the meal. So if you want to know more about the metadata, that's a great place to start. This example is from that site. This is a really basic uh, a meal file. It consists of a single category, and the category is one bit of information. The beginning and ending tags are category. Then the pattern metadata is used is what the person inputs. So whatever's in the pattern is what the person has input. In this case, if somebody asks the question, what are you? Then the template part is how, what the bot would respond. So the person asks, what are you? The bot would say, I am the latest result in artificial intelligence, which can reproduce the capabilities of the human brain with greater speed and accuracy. No pride in that <laughs> statement. <laughs> The think part of the, in the template is instructions to the bot. So that is setting variables, which is something that Emil supports, and it's very helpful in keeping conversations going 
so that Pixel can understand from one, one statement to the next what we're talking about. So if the user, after this um, typing in this statement, would say, well, what, are, what is the topic? What are we talking about? Uh, the bot would respond, we're talking about me, because the topic has been set to me. So that um, basic concept of setting variables is really important for keeping the conversation going. There are, in, to, in my little world, three ways in which questions get asked. Uh, and this is one example of metadata from Pixel. It starts with people just sitting down and typing words. And I suspect this is happening because they know this is a library site, so they just sit down and start typing in keywords like they were doing a catalog search. So they might sit down and just say corn, in which case Pixel needs to know what to do with that. They could also say star corn, star being a wildcard variable. So it will match on anything that comes before the word corn. So if they say, what do you have on growing corn, that would match that particular category. The same for the next one. If they said corn information, please, then it would match on corn star. And then the last one, star corn star, do you have any books on raising corn for the paper I'm writing for school and it's probably due tomorrow morning and could you please find me the information really fast and it goes on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they get really, really, really long. So you have to be able to match on the key phrase. And what's, what works best is to look for the most specific match point that I can find. And so in this case, it's corn. Um, it could be paper for the paper I'm work, writing for school if there was no topic. But in this case, I have a really specific match point corn. So that's what I would be shooting for and matching in the metadata. It gets a little bit more complicated. The, the asterisk or star I talked about a minute ago, it's a wildcard match. It's also can be used to um, refer back to as a variable field too. But I'm not going to go into that right now. The underscore is a more, is a, what, what I would call a hard match. And it has to be used very carefully. So in the example, if I had a pattern that said I underscore, that would literally match on anything that a person put in if they start off with, I want information on corn, I want information on your hours. I want information on the, the days of the week or I want to know what time it is. It would match all of those and re reply with a single category. And that's not good. So it has to be used with a little bit of care. Then the other term is SERI, which is like a cross-reference in, in library vocabulary. In the previous example, I had four different versions for corn. Well, using the SERI pattern, I only have to put the actual information in one of them, and then I use the, the others to refer back to that one, which makes it a lot easier to manage. Instead of having to do everything four times, I only have to do it once. And that's what the Siri tag looks like. It has just a metadata that says S-E-R-I between the tags, and it refers back to whatever is above that. Subject and topic categories are something that I have had to implement for a library application. Emil was originally designed as a conversation bot just for people to go in and talk to a bot and not particularly give any kind of information. So I added these two topic, these two category areas to provide layers to keep the conversation going. These came from the Library of Congress classification uh, code. There are, there's a topic layer and a subject one. The topic is a broader one, so in the case of, uh, of our corn example, that would be agriculture. And subject would be the narrow one, which is corn. The uh, purpose for these is to keep the conversation going. And it relates back to the way libraries are kind of organized. Our databases tend to be more broader topics. We don't have a database on corn, for example. We have Agricola, which includes a lot of information on corn. But we don't have anything really specific. The same is true for the librarians' assignments and for the libguides that we're developing or the help guides that we're using. So there really are kind of two layers to it. We can do a direct search on corn and provide the, the 
information people need that are on books and things like that, but to go to the next level, the articles, we need to move up to the topic level, and that's why there are those two levels. So in the uh, metadata for the category of corn, there's the topic is set to agriculture, the subject is set to corn, so that will be used in subsequent uh, conversation that's going, that's, that could happen with this particular question. So the, bot, the person would um, say corn in this case, or they could use any of those four matching categories, and it will bring this one up. And the bot will return, are you interested in books? And then it does a search in our discovery tool Encore on the word corn. And then it's going to uh, follow that up with some additional options. So we start with the books. That's the first thing it's going to offer which is based on the subject, which is corn. Then if the person says no, it will offer articles. And at this point, it's going to the topic level, which would be agriculture. Then it goes to LibGuides. If they say, no, I don't want articles either, we're talking about somebody who really probably doesn't know where they're going. And so a LibGuide would might be most helpful to help them get started. And that will bring up agriculture LibGuides that have been developed by librarians. And then it finally goes to the librarian for that particular subject area. Uh, some people have questioned, well, why do you put the librarian last? Right, Lorna? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. I think that was the first question she asked me. You're replacing us. <laughs> and, and the answer is because whenever that Pixel offers to send people to librarians, mm -hmm. they don't, never go there. I think if they wanted to talk to a librarian, they'd be using our chat service or go to the reference desk. So at this point in time, our experience is that that's not what people are looking for. So that's the, the current order. That, of course, could be changed at any time. So the back end of this, how this actually works. In the, the previous um, example where the bot asked, are you interested in books on corn? Um, now you see I used an underscore. This is a hard match because if the bot previously said something that had that in it, I want them to go to one of these new categories. And this, in this case, the pattern is no. So they're saying, no, I don't want books on, I don't want books on corn. So then it asks, are you interested in articles on corn? There are several databases that full list full text journals in your subject area. And at that point, if they say yes, does that being responding to what was previously um, supplied by the bot? Then if they say yes, then it will do the, the um, research articles. And in this case, we have some open source databases that are also available to the general public. So it offers both of those. So how does this look? Here's the first example. I'm looking for information on raising corn. And so it's offering the books first. Then the person says no, so then it goes to the articles, and now it's pulling up our agriculture articles. So because, because of the, um, the search syntax is customized to the particular category, it can be as, as specific as we want it to be, mm -hmm. which gives us a lot of versatility in, in providing them with exactly the right databases that at least I think they need mm -hmm. until somebody tells me they want to change it. <laughs> For the information, um, this is coming from uh, the logs, and this is an example from a question point log, and sometimes they're as cryptic as this. How hi, how do I make a RefWorks? Um, in this case, I'm, I made the assumption that they're asking about a RefWorks account, and so in this case, it's supplying the information. If you don't already have a RefWorks account, you can go here to set one up and then it gives them the URL, links them to the site to set up an account. And if you're not familiar with RefWorks, if you're not coming from on campus, you need to have a group account uh, code to put in. And most of the time people don't know that. So by adding the Siri at the end of it, it's pulling up that separate category that has information on the group code. So you can actually combine two different answers when it makes sense to do that, as it would in this case. Pixel also has a log. Here's another example. I need help with my project. This is a very generic sort of um, request, and since it isn't, doesn't give you any kind of specific subject information, what I do in these cases is I pull up a random question to ask as a follow-up. That ability to do random questions keeps the conversation fresh 
which I think is important because sometimes mm -hmm. users will type the same thing in expecting a diff, you know, the same <laughs> answer or, right. and Pixel gives them a different answer. So it makes it seem more like you're talking to a person. Mm -hmm. Some basic information about Pixel. There are 80, currently 84,000 and growing categories in the database. There's 204 spelling variations, which isn't nearly enough. That's something that I need to be working more on. The Program O interface that I use for administering the bot has a built-in functionality for adding and editing single records and groups of records, has a search feature, it has a log for conversations, and you can demo the chat, which is useful when I'm adding new categories and I want to test and make sure that they're responding the way that I want them to respond. This is uh, some Google Analytics from the past year uh, that are kind of interesting, especially when I compare them with our catalog and our discovery tool Encore. For example, the average duration of visit on Pixel is almost six minutes, which is actually longer than they spend on our catalog and our discovery tool. So that t at least tells me that people are engaged, they're sort of enjoying talking to talking with the bot, sometimes a little too much, I think. <laughs> uh, there's also a kind of interesting that, that 37, almost 38 percent are returning visitors, which is actually higher than our catalog. Um, and it's kind of like our catalog in terms of mm -hmm. its placement. The discovery tool is the first thing on our website that we encourage people to search first. Mm -hmm. So it, I think that this, these statistics at least demonstrate a lot of potential for engaging um, a, a particular niche of the population. This is never going to be a tool for faculty and probably graduate students unless they want to know about fines and things like that. And librarians won't use it except for mm -hmm. locating information on our website as Lorna was talking about. It's a pretty good way to, to um, find quick information. So, future plans for, for the bot. We are going to continue to evaluate how it fits into our, our current reference structure. We have a reference desk uh, at Love Library, the main library. We have 24-hour chat. We have LibGuides. We have instant messaging. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. We have the whole smorgasbord that everybody's <laughs> doing. And so, we're, we're experimenting with a whole bunch of things to see what's going to stick to the wall, basically. Uh, we're also going to be looking at the possibility or feasibility of going into production with other libraries. I'm looking at a, a grant, and there is a grant that I think Pixel would, fix, mm -hmm. would fit into. So I'm looking for partners, um, like a four-year undergraduate college or even a public library, to look at moving Pixel into a semantic web type architecture, where there could be one database of shared information, mm -hmm things like who's the president, which is going to be the same regardless of where you're, where you're at, but then there would be individual databases for each library that could be customized for their own search engine and their own hours and that kind of information. So if anybody out there is interested, <laughs> they'll have my contact information. And of course assessment. Uh, we haven't done any direct user assessment yet and that's going to be something that we're going to try to work on in this, this coming year. So that's it. Hey. Well, thank you. Um, I've got a bunch of questions. Does anything come in from, from the, uh, our audience uh, at the moment? Uh, Let's give them first crack here. Yeah, Dave, Dave Mitzdorf from uh, South Sioux City Public Library just said, Let's see, how much time was spent on putting in information? Um, for us, general public libraries, not a lot of staff, what would be a recommended program for this that we don't have a lot of time to put all this information in? I think that if I was going to, um, I would look at scaling it down and probably say build one that just answers questions from your website, the kind of um, FAQ answers, what are your hours, are you closed on Christmas, and how, do, how many books can I check out at a time, and not try to be too ambitious in terms of adding a lot of other information. If you scaled it down, I think it would be a whole lot easier to manage. When I started this, I spent a huge amount of time building the database and, and figuring out, a lot of it was figuring out how it, work, how it would work and whether it made sense for us or not. But I think if you scale it down, it could be a lot more manageable. Now I don't actually spend probably as much time as I should working on it, going through the logs. 
Well, and, and that leads to one of my questions. You, you, you got the software, and I'm assuming there wasn't really much of a database in it when you got it. You had to build it. Where? Actually, or, that's or, not true. Okay, correct because me then. That's <laughs> good. That's a good question. I didn't mention that. Where did the baseline come from? Yeah. How, what did you, know, you have when you started? That's a really good question because Emil has a, an open source community behind it to answer questions, oh. and the basic uh, conversational part was already built. Okay. In fact, there's there's what's what are called pickup lines that come mm -hmm. with the with the software that are designed for continuing the conversation, and they were things like, "Well, what's your sign?" Not something, <laughs> not something, not something, something we would that use? was appropriate for a library. So I changed all of the pickup lines to things like, That's "Tell me funny. about your project," and mm -hmm. uh, you know, "What is your topic?" kind of thing to has, get them. Has anybody ever asked, "What's your sign?" <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. In, yes. Fact, in fact, yeah. Pixel's been asked out on dates to go to a movie. <laughs> uh, uh, constantly, people are trying to pick up Pixel, but she has a boyfriend, so ah. she's been asked that too. Well, and, and, and as at least the only male in the room, including Pixel, I guess my question is, is was, was there a conversation about male versus female Pixel? Well, since I did it, no. Okay. <laughs> Unilateral decision. A unilateral. Okay, all right. Yes, I didn't put a whole lot. And it would be pretty easy to change that picture to whatever and mm -hmm. still have pixel. <laughs> I, I remember setting up some early um, um, social web stuff here, and I was setting it up, so I made it male, and, and mm -hmm. there was a conversation that was had. I, I yeah. seem to recall at least one of them going, why is it male? Right. right. <laughs> because I, yeah, I had to pick one. Right. There was That's only right. two choices. Um, <clears throat> and the others from the audience are just you know, speak up if, if anybody uh, yeah if one. anybody has any questions go ahead and type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface on the right side of your computer if you got it there and we can pass them on and answer them for sure. you I'll, I'll kind of basically try to go in a general order as I was I was writing them down as you were talking um, you kind of implied possibly this reducing or eliminating the need for 24-7 chat yet uh, the impression I got is you still have 24-7 yes, chat mm -hmm. Do you see a point at which this does take over at 3 a.m. or? Well, I uh, there's still it's still a very controversial uh, project in the libraries mm, okay. to say the say the least. And um, I don't know. I mean, we're we're evaluating 24-hour chat. It's very expensive yes. for the hourly mm -hmm. question rate. Right. And Pixel, of course, is pretty cheap now just since it's been built. So it's much more cost effective than 24 hour chat. Mm -hmm. The question is, can people be convinced to give up the person, that that person contact, which seems mm -hmm. to be hard for librarians to do. So, it so is, it's the librarians you need to convince. Not, that, that's right. Not the yes. In students. fact, I reading a couple of logs, mm -hmm. there were there were at least two people who were convinced Pixel was a human being, right. and there was this argument going back and forth. You're really a person. No, I'm software. No, I think you're a person. <laughs> That went on for several lines, so I mean it's 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 possible I think, but it's kind of it's a control issue I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I think I see both sides of that mm -hmm. argument. I'm not I'm not sure where I would come down there. Um, I, I remember from your presentation at IL that there's a point at which um, you need to apologize yes. to Pixel. What what, what was, what's that? Well, then there's <laughs> this list of bad words that people can use. That when somebody asks one of those, Pixel will come back and say, "No, you got to apologize. I'm not going to talk to you until you apologize." And and that can go on for pages where the person refuses to apologize. And wow. Pixel just says, "No, I'm not going to talk to you. La la la. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you have to apologize." And people and, and they do. And they, they do. do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Wow. All right. So good. A little behavior modification. Right. <laughs> Never heard. <laughs> um. So maybe a little more towards towards the, the technical ends of things. Um, how have you tested this? How well does it work on a mobile platform? If I was to go into my phone, it it should work pretty well. Where it's going to get dicey is with the iframe mm -hmm. and whether yeah, that's is. technology supported by. Mm -hmm. And most of the modern phones is pretty good with. But if somebody mm -hmm. has an older phone, it might not work so well with that one. Uh, um, uh, the and um, I want to ask you to, to to go to it, but so there when you're creating the, the XML that's behind this, you have an editing interface like mm -hmm. a form to fill. You're not writing this by hand, okay? Actually, I ended up doing most of it because uh, once you learn the metadata code, is pretty easy to do. Right. And mm -hmm. I create templates for the subject area, so I just copy and paste and just change okay. as I need to. 
the parts of it. And that goes a whole lot faster than using the editing interface. So okay, I use so you, no, you can do either either yep, way. You can do okay. neither. Yeah, I am use Notab Pro to create the category files and I have like I think think I have twenty six subject files that are cover all of the all of the subject areas of the Library of Congress okay. classification <laughs> <laughs> and thousands of entries in them. And, and <laughs> Do you know how many lines of XML you have in that no, file? No, I have no idea. <laughs> hundreds of thousands, if not millions, at this point. That, that would be That's interesting. I, I was just like, how many lines so far? I was just like, I wonder if, you know, if you, you've done a line count. But all right. Um, what sort of, I know you, you said you mined the chat logs. Um, to, to get new things in for that people are asking for. Have you gotten... Um, larger faculty input as to what should be in here or reference staff or beyond how how else are you adding new stuff well okay, it, okay, gonna... <laughs> the only one who's actually given me much input is Lorna okay. I have asked the reference people and I, they never supply anything but when I started this project over two years ago they said it wasn't necessary because they were going to build their own FAQ system which never happened either okay. so mm -hmm. now we're using libguides and I'm hoping that it, things will move forward a little bit. That's probably where most of their energy is going right now mm -hmm. is into LibGuides. Mm -hmm. And we have also just recently purchased LibAnswers. Mm -hmm. So that's another co competitor, I guess you could say, to Pixel. We'll see how it goes. And uh, I, I, if you don't want to answer, if either of you don't want to answer this, because I, mean, I, I know, right. you know, politics being what they are, do you think that's a, uh, you know, passive-aggressive, we don't want it, to succeed, we don't like the idea in the first place, so they're just like, I've got too much else to do. do, you, do you, All of the above. All of the above. Yes. Okay. And I think, um, in saying that, because I'm a reference lawyer, sure. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I think part of it is um, sometimes it is not knowing. I think at the beginning they really did not. They felt threatened because they did mm -hmm. not understand how Pixel could be a part of the service. Okay. And I think sometimes, just like how we're not threatened by Twitter and Facebook, and link and all the others. I think there is a place where we can offer services because our clients are different. We can offer different services to each client. And I sure. think that's where Pixel comes in. Mm -hmm. So in a way I don't really see Pixel even replacing chat because you do have some patrons who will prefer to use chat. That's and true. Pixel. And you have some patrons who will always use Pixel. But as librarians we know that we are we want to provide a service to all and we want the service to be equivalent to all. So Pixel, and I think now, and I think a lot because so many new things are coming in, I think a lot of reference librarians are realizing that there is a place for Pixel. Pixel will be able to answer certain questions mm -hmm. and chat will be able to answer certain questions. And the truth is I'm a librarian and I call our help desk a lot. <laughs> sure. You know, I uh -huh. call because I know it's the quickest way to this answer. Right. But I call them for specific answers. Mm -hmm. And then I will go to Pixel for specific answers. So I think it's a matter of time, and, and, and mm -hmm. slowly I think now the reference librarians are seeing where Pixel is in the reference right. flow, mm -hmm. then they say, this is a real help for us, because mm -hmm. while I'm dealing with one client here, and I have my chat online, another patron can come and I can say, can you ask Pixel that question, because she can help you with that while mm -hmm. I'm doing mm -hmm. this. So, um, so I think we're moving, I think it's moving on, I think it's a great, I really think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, so I hope that answered. Yeah, no, no, that, no, that was a wonderful it's, answer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's really evolving. I think. Yeah, it, it is very much evolving. And, and and as you add more information, it becomes right. more useful. That's right. And yeah. So that it's it's kind of snowballs, I guess, mm -hmm. for lack of a better. And I think there are moment. certain things that Pixel will never do. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. and I think we're always yeah. aware of that. That there are certain things, and that is why I think. Pixel is very good in sending, as you said, the librarian comes last, but not really last. It's a matter of Pixel has a way, because we've built it in, of evaluating what sources are the best sources. And so it will go to these sources. And finally, if these sources can't help you, then you need to go personally to the library. Yeah, it, and it, so it, it has that kind of new, flow. New technology so, always does that. There's a yeah. great like it 1945 is. Wilson Library Bulletin article about, you know, should we be doing reference over the telephone? I know. Oh, oh, no, right. because, you know, <laughs> it was uh, a threat, right? I, you know, because, you know, can you actually get that personal interaction with the person and you can't and see I their see body language? And, 
Yeah. And so... And we've come past that. And yeah. then, of course, it was with chat. You mm -hmm. know, when you get the emotives and the emotions, how do you know what they're saying? Right. Uh, question from the audience. Um, yeah, we do have one from the audience. Um, many patrons want to talk, and this is kind of what you were just talking about anyways, but many patrons want to talk to a real live person. Also, many people are not computer literate. So how can these problems be addressed? And I think that was what you're talking about, that having all the different options. Yeah, yeah we will never eliminate the telephone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and we will never eliminate having a person mm -hmm. there. And, but what we have tried to do with this virtual reference is to address the people who don't want to come in for the person. Mm -hmm. So you do have a set of the population mm -hmm. that are not like that, that they don't want to, or they don't see the need, or they don't have the time to come in and they want to be able to do it from home and still get some kind of personal feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pixel will do for them. The other so. thing we're trying to do is to make it as low tech as possible. So all they have to do is type in right. whatever right. comes to their mind. Right. It's very yeah. nice, simple, clean interface. It is a not, very good I would say not very scary to mm -hmm. someone yeah. who's, who doesn't go on the computer a lot. Right. Um, the you were showing the Google Analytics there, which was great. Uh, and uh, can you measure the spikes to like you know end of semester? Is, is, is well, the mm -hmm. big spike was when it was entered in the chatbot <laughs> challenge. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. What, what what is that? Actually? It's a ch the chatterbot challenge was they aren't doing it anymore. It was an annual chatterbox contest oh, okay. where experts went in and evaluated chatbots and then rated them. Oh, so and there was. Design. We tied with Alice for 10th place, I believe. Alice, right. hey, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, are you getting any sort of analytics regarding the users? Graduate, undergraduate, staff, no. faculty? No. no. Have you considered it or just that's not where, really a way to do it? That's why we'd have to do assessment because we, right. we try very carefully to keep it anonymous. I mean, I can kind of tell from the questions. I know the librarians when they come in. Sure. You, know, <laughs> you know our language, right? Yes. We've got our own the language. The way they ask, I do that immediately. It's a librarian. And you can tell kids. Uh -huh. it, yeah, we get an awful lot of elementary school people, kids. Oh, and, okay. and, they, and they'll ask anything and everything. I had this one conversation where a kid was complaining about being bullied. <laughs> Those kinds of things are hard to, wow. yeah. to program for. Mm -hmm. oh. But you have to be prepared for anything. A lot of foreign um, people come in trying to practice English. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. There yeah. is actually a chat bot for that, but they're not using <laughs> it. <laughs> can, can you program it to point them in that direction? <laughs> I, you know. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. But I, what, what happens is that um, Pixel will say, well, we have books in Italian or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and kind of maybe the last question I have, Specifically, I when you were going through and one of the answers said, if you want to narrow it down, click on the facet over on the left. Mm -hmm. And that just mm -hmm. shouted out at me a librarian word. <laughs> it did. We will um, change that. Uh, well, I, you know what? No. But, it, but it, 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 I, I'm not sure I have a question, mm -hmm. but have you done, I guess the question would be, have you done you know, usability testing right. with yeah. non-librarians? <laughs> No, we haven't done any usability. Okay, that's right. the next, the assessment that's, that's is the next up. stage. Okay. Yeah, we haven't done usability testing on our discovery tool, our catalog either. So sure. it's okay. it's one of the weaknesses I think we have mm -hmm. that we've got to start addressing. Okay. Yeah. But that's what we call it as a facet. So. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, I, oh, See, I, I knew what I, she I meant. Did, I, did, I knew what she meant after I saw that. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah I'm just thinking, yeah. you know, 18-year-old student How, coming well, in and going a non -academic What well, you call well, things are just now. really, really hard. Mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the things we struggle with constantly, and argue over, well, what do you call last thing? Yeah. <laughs> we call an open URL resolver. <laughs> yeah, right. You want to get an <laughs> argument <laughs> started, <laughs> ask that question. <laughs> That's oh yeah, well, and I don't, and, and to, to show our attempt, I don't necessarily have a better suggestion. I just saw a facet, <laughs> I mean, that is yes. a librarian it word. Is. It so, is. Um, but yeah, that happened. Okay. Um, any other questions coming in from the audience? Not at the moment. Not at the moment? No. Okay. Um, I don't really have any uh, news this week other than Windows 8 is out. Um, so, you know, hey. Uh, that's, that's kind of the bit the big uh, news since last month, um, and I'll let you you know go Microsoft.com. I don't think we need to send people off off to that website. I'm using it at home. I actually like it, but you know I'm weird. 
uh, in that way. A lot of people don't. Anyways, um, so thank you very much. Thank this you. was wonderful. Um, I, I always try to, I, I know what people are going to talk about, but I try not to research it too much so I can kind of answer, you know, come up with questions on the fly. And I, I had a whole bunch of them there, and, and I think I, I got all the answers I was looking for. And we had a couple answers or questions coming from the audience, so thank you for that. Um, and I think that's uh, it for Tech Talk. So I'll hand it, hand yeah. it, hand hand it back to Krista. Yeah. No, thank no, you, for inviting me. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. And one sec here, folks. Okay. Well, thank you very much for attending this week, our um, Income Slide this week. Uh, it has been recorded, and we do have the PowerPoint as well. So that will be uploaded when um, when the recording is available. The PowerPoint will be there. And um, I've been grabbing some of the websites that we've been mentioning and putting them into our Delicious account. I know I still I, I miss some, <laughs> but I'll be going back and doing that. So you'll have all the quick links to all those as well um, when the recording is up and ready. So I will. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. But I hope you'll join us next time when our topic is a book club kit reviews. That's kind of hard to say. Um, mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, here at the Library Commission, we do put together collections of book club kits, um, ten or so books in a bag that we can send out to your library, and you can have a book club discussion um, on those titles. And there are always new ones being added. So. Um, Beth Goble, Deborah Dracos, and Lisa Kelly will be here with us next week talking about the new ones that are there and how you can use that program to run um, book club discussions at your library. So please join us um, for that next week. And Encompass Live is on Facebook. If you are a Facebook user, um, please um, feel free to follow us there. There it goes. Um, and we'll post here anytime that when episodes are coming up. Uh, I had a reminder this morning, join us right now for this week's so anything that we're doing with Encompass Live, you'll find the announcements on here, so you can follow us there as well, if you'd like. Other than that, um, that wraps it up. And cool. thank you very much, Michael, Laura, Deanne. Um, just a few thank yous from the audience. And we'll wrap things up, and we'll hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.